In this video, I want to review electromagnetic radiation. So this is something you're already familiar with from your studies in general chemistry and general physics. However, I want to review it so that we're all on the same page because before we jump into all of the different failures of classical mechanics where quantum mechanics was born, um, all of them will uh, revolve around some sort of phenomena of interactions between light and matter. So it's important for us to understand how light is modeled uh, via electromagnetic radiation. So, um, so electromagnetic radiation uh, stems from oscillating electromagnetic fields, right, from electricity and magnetism. And uh, they're described by these waves, right? So we describe light as waves. And waves, you know, have this type of pattern as I've drawn out here. Um, they're going to have a wavelength, uh, which is the distance between two peaks, right? So each wave is going to have a peak and a trough, right? So, um, so the distance between each peak and trough is going to be the wavelength. And however many cycles occur over a given period is going to be the frequency, right? So if I wanted to draw a wave that had a higher frequency, right, I could do something like this. Right. And and that wave would have a higher frequency. Right. So, um, you know, let me actually delete that because this <laughs> looks a little confusing. But, you know, you get the point. Right. So that wave would have a higher frequency and a smaller wavelength. Right. So those are the wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional and they're related by the speed of light. Right. So lambda times nu is equal to the speed of light. Right. That's your general equation for wavelength and frequency. If you need a, a more in-depth refresher on this stuff, I actually have a really good video on this in my general chemistry one uh, playlist. So I'll link to that one uh, if you need any more in-depth uh, review of electromagnetic radiation. What I wanted to do in this video is just review the electromagnetic spectrum and introduce two new things that uh, that are going to be important to us moving forward in quantum mechanics. Right. So, like I said, a lot of this stuff is going to be based on the interaction of light and matter. Right. When we make a quantum observation, some type of quantum measurement, we're usually using or exploiting this interaction between light and matter, right? So let's say you have some molecule, right? I'll just draw a simple diatomic molecule here with these two circles being the atoms and this uh, line being the bond, right? If you have some molecule, right? You can shine some light on it, right? So let's have this little wave be our light that we're shining on it. And when you shine light on a molecule at a particular frequency, it is going to do something. Now, that something that it does is going to depend on which region of the electromagnetic spectrum you're in. Right. So this graph I have here shows the full electromagnetic spectrum all the way from radio waves to cosmic waves. And depending on which region you're in, what light you're coming in with. Uh, the molecule is going to do a different thing that you can exploit to understand something about its structure, right? Um, so if you're coming in with microwave radiation, right, light that's in the microwave region, then the molecule is going to rotate, right? So these are going to be molecular rotations. Uh, if you're in the far infrared, the IR region, the far infrared or the near infrared, you're going to cause molecular vibrations, right? So those bonds uh, between the different atoms are going to vibrate and every molecule is going to have a certain different number of molecular vibrations that are allowed that you can observe using IR radiation. When you get into the visible region, now you're you're drilling down a little bit further. You get into this these uh, these higher energy regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. You start to excite electrons into higher energy levels. And we'll learn a little bit more about this as we move along here. Uh, but just know that um, if you're not shining any light on a molecule, it's in what's known as the ground state, right? And when you shine uh, electromagnetic radiation in the visible region or above, you start to excite those electrons from their ground state to an excited state, right? Um, so that's what happens in the visible and UV region. Um, is you start to have these electronic excitations of valence electrons and molecules. 
as you go to the x-ray region, you're still exciting electrons, but those electrons are going to be further down in the electron configuration. So core electrons, right? So like the 1s electrons um, in a molecule, you're going to start exciting those electrons. And this is a really interesting field, this x-ray spectroscopy. Uh, this is actually what my entire PhD dissertation was about. So I studied, you built computational models that studied this core electron excitation that happens when you shine X-ray radiation on molecules. It was a whole dissertation about that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so so this is what happens in the X-ray region. And then when you get to the gamma ray region, now you really start to just strip the molecule apart. You start to have these nuclear excitations or nuclear decay um, that really starts to, to change the composition of your molecule or different atoms completely. Um, and anything above that, you're really ripping a molecule apart. So, um, so yeah, so based on which region of the electromagnetic spectrum you're in, your molecule is going to respond differently to that radiation, right? So um, we're going to use this a lot when we start talking about spectroscopy, different types of spectroscopy, utilize these different interactions between light and matter in order to figure out something about the molecular st or atomic structure, right? Um, one of my professors that I had in grad school described this beautifully. He described this as molecular torture, right? Basically, you're shining light on molecules. You're putting them through some sort of torture regimen and just trying to get information out of them. You want to know what's the structure of that molecule or that atom. And so you're going to start, you know, shining this light on it, trying to get it to tell you what is it. Right. Um, and so you really just the whole field of spectroscopy and, and really a lot of these quantum observations are just, you know, putting them through whatever your given method of molecular torture is in order to get something out of the molecule. Right. To know what it is. Right. So um, so I, that was the first thing I wanted to make sure is clear here that, you know, different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum cause different motions or different um, different excitations in molecules and atoms. And the other thing that I wanted to, to introduce here is a new unit, well, kind of a new unit. It's something called wave numbers. And it's heavily used in spectroscopy, especially, um, especially spectroscopy in this region here, uh, the microwave and infrared region. Wave numbers are constantly used. And they're really simple. Um, basically, we denote them as of the frequency with a little tilde above it, right? That's the notation that I use for wave numbers. Basically, this is your frequency divided by the speed of light, right? Basically, you're just, you know, getting the speed of light out of this relationship between frequency and, um, and wavelength, right? So really, the wave number is just the inverse of the wavelength. And so wave numbers are constantly um, reported or conventionally reported as inverse centimeters, right? So you'll see centimeters to the negative one. That's not just centimeters, that's wave numbers. This is the inverse of the, um, the inverse of the wavelength, right? And it's reported generally in centimeters to the negative one. This is what we call wave numbers, right? So when you see this, this means wave numbers. So you might see a, a spectrum where the x-axis you know, has some some feature at 500 inverse centimeters. So you would say 500 wave numbers that occurs at 1000 wave numbers. Right. So that's a unit that you'll see in different plots and graphs. I just wanted to make sure that you're familiar with that. So if you need, like I said, if you need a more in-depth review of this, there's a really good general chemistry video on it um, in one of my earlier playlists. And uh, the two things that I really wanted to drive home in this short video is that you know we're really going to be focusing in on the interaction of light and matter depending on the region of the spectrum you're in there's going to be a different type of excitation that occurs and introducing this unit of wave numbers <laughs>